Hi Cubies, here's Alexandra again and welcome to my next tutorial. This time we will have a look at the XV8 Crisis Suit from the Tau. <coughs> this is uh, how I built him already and as you can see on the base he is already primed and as a primer I used a spray primer from Army Painter here and uh, the color is Uniform Gray. So, um, I decided uh, I want to paint him in the um, Commander Oshova paint scheme, the uh, Oshova set, so he will be uh, mainly in red. But uh, I will not paint him in the uh, normal GW fashion, there he is uh, simply a opaque color and then uh, all the edges highlighted. This is a very clean and, uh, well, good fitting uh, color scheme for box art, but uh, I think the Oshova set is uh, far out there and uh, way uh, way away from the uh, normal <coughs> Tau uh, main support line, so um, I want to have him really battle damaged, because uh, I imagine that the uh, Oshova set is not so good at um, well, reinforcing their uh, lines and keeping everything um, in a clean way, so he will be battle torn. So, um, as the first uh, base coat layer, I will use my own color mix called Crimson Gore. You see, this is a very, very dark red, and uh, to mix this, uh, I've pre mixed. Um, both parts 50 50 heavy red uh, Vallejo extra opaque and uh, Citadel base Mephiston red, and I have added also uh, then one third black into the paint. And so, this is how it looks. This is now a extra opaque dark red or crimson gore. So, um, I'm using here standard Citadel base coat brush. <coughs> So, and uh, I will simply start by applying this dark red to the whole armor. Also, I will add a little bit of water into the paint to make the paint smoother. And also the paint coat itself thinner. The thinner the coat uh, you are applying the better because um, you don't want to obscure any details. So, And what I'm doing here, uh, <coughs> you don't want to use your good brush for this. This here is an, as you can see, the tip uh, spread out um, base coat brush. So <coughs> he is now heavy duty work like this. So, And don't worry if the color coat is not covering 100%, that's totally okay. We will go over it with a wash and also several other layers, so that doesn't matter in the end. I will finish up now uh, the red paint job and I'll be back in a second. Okay, here we go. <coughs> As you can see, the first red coat is applied. And what we'll do now, we use Nuln Oil Shade, this is a wash, and we will give the whole model a nice coat of that. <coughs> the reason for doing this is quite simple, we want all the recesses have a nice shadow, <coughs> and also fix some painting mistakes here and there, where we have forgotten to put paint in, and so on. <coughs> Quite easy task, don't be shy with using the wash. You see, I'm applying that stuff quite thick. And I think you get the point. I'll finish up this and be back when this is dry. So tubies, as you can see, the wash is dry, and now we will paint uh, the rest of the grey parts here in black. 
simply take our black paint. The brand doesn't matter. And then we paint those things here in black. Also quite easy. <clears throat> Nothing special about that. So, I'll finish that and be right back. So, Tuvies, the messy part is now over. As you can see, everything is prepared. This is uh, how I call it, the base layer. I know it looks uh, quite dark and some of you uh, might ask, hey, girl painting, why don't you simply uh, spray paint uh, or spray prime the whole miniature in black and start with that. It's uh, simply because of one reason. Um, red doesn't cover good about uh, over black, but over this dark red it will cover. And um, now we start with uh, base paint, corn red, and start highlighting this. Um, and now I have switched uh, the brush to a size 2 brush, um, or <clears throat> the size of a base coat brush that is uh, in a better shape than the one I've used before. So uh, the brand of the brush doesn't matter at all, um, as long as you can uh, paint with it quite good. So, and uh, what I will do now, as you can see, it covers quite well. I will now uh, paint the whole miniature, all the red areas, with this corn red. And uh, as you can see, I will leave the uh, recesses and corners in the darker shade. So I will add a tiny little bit of water into the paint, not too much. Uh, only that much that the paint strokes are nice and even. And that way we get a nice opaque coverage. So painting uh, these areas is quite simple as you can see and I will uh, finish up the rest of the paint job and be right back like usual. As you can see Julius, here is the first real nice even coat of the red. And now we follow on that path with uh, highlighting even more. And this time we use Mephiston Red. So, give it a good shake. <clears throat> a little bit of water. So, and basically we are doing the same as before. We are now painting the whole area and leaving a little bit of the old color behind, like that. Simple as that. And for those of you that still keeps asking what I am using as a miniature holder, I get this question three times a day, even if I manage to say it every now and then. This is simply an old paint pot, and on top of it is a little bit of post attack, and this functions as a miniature holder for me. So, now you know. So, and we're simply painting here the highlights in. Just like that. So, <coughs> I will finish up the paint job and I'll be back when all the red parts are looking like this. Be right back. Okie dokie, so does the model look now and after, after the Mephiston red. And now we go for the last highlight with uh, 
Evil Sons Scarlet. <coughs> Just taking something of that on my palette. And again with a little bit of water. So, and now we will highlight the forest edges like that here we will not paint everything this is just a final highlight so pick some points that you think uh, that the light from above would hit and then give it a nice highlight like here, for example, from two sides, like that. Yeah, the top of the thruster. <coughs> Same on the other side. Just like that. This gives us nice bright red to work with. Uh, here, for example. part here. Nice stroke. <coughs> okay, here the top part. We are almost done with the highlights. So, uh, the rest can stay in the other red. So, maybe this little bit here. <coughs> okay, doc. So, um, <coughs> at this stage, um, the miniature is almost uh, play ready but uh, oh I forgot one major stroke here that doesn't look so good so uh, maybe here also okay um and like I said, uh, this model is almost play ready. Um, you could also just uh, only make the base and then uh, you could play with them if you want to have a clean look. Um, the GW style is, like I said before, just um, highlighting all the edges with um, one brighter color. But we will not do that. We will uh, weather this um, armor now and, well, at this stage, uh, I'll be back in a second. Okie dokie, there I'm back. And for this stage, we need colors, uh, a black <coughs> and Rhinox hide as color. Uh, also, you could use the Abaddon black, new one. <coughs> so, and you need a blister sponge. This is uh, simply foam uh, if you don't have any blister sponges because nowadays the blisters don't come with foam uh, just use some other kind of foam you can grab and then simply rip off something like that <coughs> and 
something. I will go in there with a tiny little scissor and scratch it on a regular like that so that we can get little irregular shapes. What I'm doing with this, some of you might already know, <coughs> I'm going to um, tap now some battle damage in there. So for the battle damage we need a dark brown tone and for that we use Rhinox height and darken that even more down with a little bit of black just like that so and that now we will use with a little tweezer just uh, grab it mm, along that line maybe then you put it into the color <coughs> dab it off on a paper towel a little bit yeah that's good and now uh, we are damaging the armor by simply tapping this blister sponge against the armor and we are concentrating our efforts on some edges where m the most damage would occur. Also here on the feet guard like that. this sponge a little bit to make some damage to the thrusters here just simply tapping it <coughs> And just like that, the damage appears. So, hmm. put on that side again, right there. Okay, these are some really nice scratches and battle damages. And what we will do now is. We will go in with silver into the scratches and <coughs> increase this damaged look even more. So for that I'm taking a finer brush and then I need a dark silver variant like bolt gun metal or something like that that you have laying around. The brand doesn't matter. So, and then simply go in and paint in with the tip of the brush inside of this uh, metal scratches. So, let's zoom in a little bit more <coughs> so I can actually see what I'm doing. Just like that, but leave a little bit of the black behind so that it occurs that there is a little bit of shadow in between. And all of a sudden, this becomes really, really nice damaged areas. Just tapping here and there. You don't need to hit every single little tiny spot, <coughs> but uh, the bigger ones like that here. So, 
you get the point. Uh, I will finish that up and be right back. Okay, here we can see now uh, the whole armor is battle damaged and of course you can use this technique for every blood angel, word bearer or um, world eater that you are painting, not only this tower. So, uh, for the black parts, um, I will not highlight these because uh, that would look totally strange. The only way uh, you could really highlight black is with edge highlighting, but, um, well, that would look strange when we don't have edge highlights at the main model and all the black parts are edge highlight, so I will leave it like that. Instead, I will uh, paint also battle damage and we will uh, use our tiny little handy dandy sponge again and we will use directly um, the silver because <laughs> obviously on black we can't paint black scratches so we will uh, paint them directly in metal color so just simply use the sponge and scratch the surface of the weapon <coughs> the other weapon the leg, the feet, so, <clears throat> let's quickly turn the sponge a little bit, a little bit there, Oops. a little bit out of focus, Sorry for that. So, and what I will do now is the following. Uh, I want the feet to be dusty. I want them to look like uh, he was walking through the desert or something like that. Or, um, well, very uh, dusty field. And for that, we use uh, some pigments now. Uh, where do I have it? Uh, this one is good. <coughs> Burnt Umber, I use from Vallejo Pigments. So, I simply put some in the cup, not much, just like that. And what I'm using here is a very, very soft brush. So. Grab it like that, and then <coughs> I will apply that here directly to the miniature. And as you can see, it directly gives the miniature a dusty look around the feet. So, like he was walking through a dusty environment. Also, we can drag that up a little bit here. The rest of the feet. So, <coughs> putting that back now here. Thing. <coughs> Next, I will use um, Vallejo um, dark yellow ochre. A little bit into the cup, and I still have some of the darker pigments on the brush, but that doesn't matter. So, and also we will slightly apply that. <laughs> if we have too much, then simply blow that away a little bit. by tapping. I know this uh, will not hold long and uh, if you are sometimes washing your miniatures or dusting them off <laughs> then I would uh, totally suggest you will um, then use some spray varnish to uh, keep the pigments in place where they belong. So, also, I will use some other pigments here, uh, like, for example, this one here. 
this is one from the uh, Noch pigments I have shown you. I have uh, bought me a set of those. They come in these little tubes. <coughs> so, I'm putting also some. Oh, I can use here yeah, this cup. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> now uh, with a brush, simply wash it out in water. Those pigments are absolutely washable. So, and that uh, was uh, the rest of this paint job. Uh, or almost. Um, I think there's only one little detail left, this little lens here we have <coughs> in his head. So we will use for that, let us see, uh, we need a nice contrast color for the red, so I will use green. We'll use now a Caliban green as a base color for that. So. Just like that. Okay. And now I will highlight that color with some yellow here. Flash kids yellow. A half crescent moon shaped stroke yeah, that color is a little bit dry so a little bit water for a better flow yeah that's better okay now I will uh, highlight even more more yellow. <coughs> Again, a little bit more downwards. So <coughs> now I will make two little yellow dots. Also, you could make them white if you want to. One down here. And that way you get a nice iris. <coughs> so now we remove our miniature from our holder. Take our handy dandy white glue. Also an old brush, a very old brush like that here. Then we will paint the whole base in white glue. very exciting right now but <coughs> I don't want to hit the feet too heavy so okay <coughs> that's done now we need our sand box <coughs> just adding some sand and for those of you that keep asking me what kind of sand I'm using, this is a mixture out of playground sand, 
birdcage sand and some bigger gravel. This uh, brown pieces is that bigger gravel in this. <clears throat> and this gives us a really nice ground. <clears throat> so uh, this needs to dry now and uh, I'll be back in a second when I will uh, apply some wash over that and dry brush it. Be right back. The sand is almost dry now and that's the perfect time for a wash of Argos Earthshade. Just take a big brush and apply it, barely touching. And give the whole base a nice brown look. Of course you can do that with every color you like. But I prefer deep brown tones like that or black. But we want to have this <coughs> base to have a nice deserty look and so we will use the brown. paint the base corner in the base edge in the color of your choice. <coughs> I will use black for that simply because it looks nice. It's a neutral color. And it is easy to apply because it has a good coverage ability. So, and <coughs> then we have to let that dry again. Be right back. So, the wash is dry now, and now I give it a nice dry brush with a fitting name, XV88. <laughs> If you have the old colors, the good old snake bite leather. So take a big brush and slightly brushing over it. better. <laughs> so the next driver stage is 5050 XV88 and Screaming Skull or Bleached Bone <clears throat> for the old ones. And now <clears throat> the last highlight will be pure screaming skull. Not everywhere, just here and there. So and to give it a little bit more color, we will add a little grass tuft if you have one. I have one laying around here. So I will simply add that. <coughs> so, a little bit 
white claw on the back. Also a dot of white glue on the base. And then simply press it on. And you're good to go. Ta-da! So, and that finishes our tutorial on the XV-8 Crisis Suit in the Commander Oshova paint scheme for the Oshova set. I hope you liked this tutorial and we see us in the next video. Yeah, Alexandra.